I have been asked to, to tell you about what's, the, uh, what's specifically VACT, the Wallenberg Center for Quantum Technology, but also to take a look at what's the, the ecosystem in, in Sweden when it comes to quantum technology. So that's, that's my task here today. So uh, I will start with a very uh, a short summary of what, or, or an overview of what is, is uh, the Wallenberg Center for Quantum Technology. This is a, a, a center that started in 2018, so we've been running for uh, five and a half years, and it's a 12-year program. Uh, we were given two main tasks uh, when we were uh, awarded this, uh, this big grant from the Wallenberg Foundation. And uh, one was to build a broad uh, competence base in Sweden uh, on quantum technology, both in academia and in industry. The other task was to build a Swedish quantum computer. So those are our two, two, two main tasks. So, so that means that the center has two parts. One is what we call the core project, the building of the quantum computer, and one is a more standard excellence program where we also explore uh, basic science and, and new ideas uh, that can then bear fruit uh, further ahead. So there are presently six universities involved. Uh, the, the biggest part is at Chalmers where the quantum computer is being built, but there's also big parts here in Lund uh, and in Stockholm. And then there are smaller parts in Linköping and at Göteborg University. So in total, we're about 140 people, uh, 30 postdocs and 60 PhD students, of which 11 are industrial PhD students. So we are collaborating with industry in different ways uh, and that I will come into to, to later on. The total funding for this, uh, for this center is about 140 million euros. Most of that comes from the Wallenberg Foundation, but there's also co-funding from the universities and contributions from the, the partner companies. Uh, so then if we zoom out a little bit and, and see what is the ecosystem in Sweden, there's of course many different parts. And, and uh, uh, so what you see in the center here is, is, uh, is VACT, the Wallenberg Center for Quantum Technology. We have a number of, of uh, partner companies. Uh, we have a, a postdoc program together with Finland. Uh, we have uh, uh, also recently uh, started a, a test bed that I will come into to, to later on. We of course have big connections to the European flagship and, and programs there. Uh, in terms of infrastructure, uh, the clean rooms are extremely important for fabrication of not only qubits and quantum computing devices, but also for quantum sensing and quantum communication devices. Uh, there's also connections to the quantum life science uh, that EBA is, is heading. And there's also another center in Sweden, uh, which is the Wallenberg Initiative for Networks and Quantum Information, which is a more theoretical, mathematical uh, center, which is, is based at Nordita in Stockholm. So, uh, on, and I should say that there, on the innovation side, there's been a number of programs by the Vinova um, funding agency, and there's also a separate, uh, something called the Wallenberg Launchpad, where the Wallenberg Foundation is also supporting uh, verification uh, research at the universities that is close to com commercialization. So this is the, 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 the bigger picture of the quantum landscape in, in, uh, uh, in Sweden. And I hope uh, I, hope I don't, didn't, didn't miss anyone. If, you, if you're not on this map, let me know after, after the talk. Good. Uh, so uh, then going back to VAC, this is roughly how we, what, what we look like. So of course, here is the, 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 the big research is, is, is done here, and we do cover the, the, the four pillars, computing, simulation, sensing, and communication, and you can see that that's also, uh, there's different responsibilities for the different uh, uh, universities. Uh, we have uh, industry collaboration up here. We have administration here. I will show a little bit, zoom in on these different parts later on. 
and then we also have a graduate school. So since we have um, 60 PhD students, that, that is, of course, a big part of the center. Uh, so here you can see this from, from a slightly different uh, point of view. So you see that we have computing and simulation is based at, at Chalmers. And, and since the quantum computer is also there, that's, of course, a big part of the center. Then com uh, quantum communication is based uh, mainly at KTH, and, and quantum sensing is based mainly here in, in Lund. Uh, the people who, so who are we who are, are, are leading the center? We are 10 PIs. Uh, you see them here. I'm not going to mention all the names, but I, I saw Stefan Kreidel was here uh, earlier at least. Yeah. Uh, you see uh, Joram Mendin is the senior advisor, and we have a number of administrators. Uh, one of the things that is very important is to build competence uh, I said both in, in industry and academia. And the building in academia is done via uh, recruitment of assistant and associate professors. These are the six assistant and associate professors that we have recruited so far. We have uh, eight more to be employed during the 12 year period and four of those are ongoing recruitments. So this is of course a very important part to, you know, it's a 12 year program so at, when when the 12 years are over, uh, what will be remaining it will at least be these professors out at, at universities in Sweden. So how do, we, how do we interact with industry? So we do that in, in three different ways. So one is that we have uh, partner companies uh, and, and those are the, the users, the people, the, the big industries that exist today that are not doing quantum technology as their main business, but they see that there may be interesting uh, opportunities for them within quantum technology. So uh, it's big companies like Volvo, AstraZeneca, Jeppesen, Hitachi Energy, Saab, and Ericsson. So these, are then con these companies are then contributing uh, cash into the, the center, and the collaboration happens via industrial PhD students. Then we have a number of enabling uh, technology companies that, are, uh, that we are collaborating with, that where we also have some industrial PhD students, but also these are companies that help us to do the technology uh, that we need to do to build a quantum computer or to run our projects in the Excellence Center. And then uh, the third way to, 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 uh, to interact with industry is to create spin-off companies. And I'm proud to say that we have eight uh, spin-off companies that have been uh, coming out from, from, from VACT researchers. And they have all been, uh, been uh, created in the last 30 months. So before that, we had zero. Now, in the last two and a half years, really a lot of things are happening. And of course, there's, uh, we know that there's a lot of, of money in the system, venture capital, et cetera, uh, that is uh, beneficial for, for these startup companies. So this is the way we, we interact with industry, and we see that this is really a growing part of, of, uh, of the ecosystem. Uh, here you see the pictures of the, the seven uh, in, industrial PhD students with the big companies. And you also see a little bit what they are interested in. You can see uh, machine learning. Uh, you can see flight logistics, uh, radar, uh, quantum chemistry, quantum key distribution, and distributed quantum computing. So those are uh, the, the things that these industrial PhD students work on. Uh, uh, one specific of the spin-off companies is an IP holding company that we have formed uh, uh, to protect uh, IP and to take patents and make it, have a simple solution for, for taking patents in the quantum technology area. So it's owned uh, to a large extent by the researchers, but then there's also uh, uh, Chalmers Holding and Navigara Seed, which is a Wallenberg-owned uh, uh, investment company, 
uh, they own parts of this and they put in cash uh, so that we can afford to take the patents. Um, and uh, we have an operational manager. Uh, 35 of the researchers have signed up for this, uh, 35 uh, researchers from, from VACT. Uh, and uh, this started in uh, uh, a year ago. And uh, this is now up and running, and there's uh, uh, four patents in the pipeline. Good. Uh, another thing that we have worked on uh, within VACT together with other players is uh, to, to write the, the Swedish quantum agenda. Um, how many of you have, have seen it or, or read it? Yeah, good, uh, a few. <laughs> uh, so so uh, why did we write a Swedish quantum agenda? Well, we felt that it was important for Sweden as a country to have a coordinated uh, action within quantum technology. And uh, so this includes uh, a SWOT analysis, and it also includes this uh, mapping of the, the quantum ecosystem. It was published uh, the, uh, in March uh, this year, both in Swedish and in English, and it has been presented to the government uh, in, uh, on a few, a few different um, uh, occasions. And uh, the main com conclusion here is that it's, there's really a need for a, a funded national strategy on quantum technology because now there's very uh, little uh, coordination. In fact, it's, it's hard to know which department in the government has the responsibility for issues that relate to quantum technology. And, and I think this, this now the, the government has understood this question and, and, and so they are listening. And uh, um, we, we have also pointed out here that private funding is not enough. So actually most of the ecosystem that I showed you earlier is really uh, based on, on private funding from, and 90% and of that is from the, from the Wallenberg Foundation. So Sweden needs to become uh, quantum ready for the future to, to harvest the, the opportunities and to also to, to avoid possible threats in the future. Now I want to say a little bit about the VACT quantum computer. So uh, we are quite a few people. So here in this picture, you actually see 50 people who are in one way or another uh, uh, involved in, in the building of the quantum computer. So this also includes our theory people who are doing calculations. Uh, and uh, what you see here is our present device, which is a 25 qubit platform. Uh, unfortunately, here you see only the backside. Uh, uh, this is the chi silicon chip with uh, superconducting uh, transmon qubits on it. Uh, and it's flip chipped to this circuit board uh, where it then has the control uh, lines and, and readout lines for uh, controlling and reading out the, the, the qubits. So uh, just to say a few words about the, the quality of our qubits, I, I think we're, uh, we have uh, uh, quite decent uh, coherence times of around 100 microseconds. We have three nines in single qubit fidelities and, and two nines in, in two qubit fidelities and residual populations, which is uh, a fraction of a percent. So these... Uh, these uh, numbers are all close to state of the art. I know IBM is now up to a millisecond, so we're, they're, uh, they're uh, uh, making really good qubits. Uh, but uh, we have good, good quality uh, uh, qubits, and they're made in a, in a, in a high quality clean room at, at Chalmers. Uh, so, so then, uh, what we, we're actually not. Uh, not only building one uh, quantum computer, we are actually in parallel building more than one quantum computer. So we started out with uh, two qubits. Uh, we have uh, one with five, and now we're working with this, which I call 20 or 25. Uh, uh, and, and we're at different stages here. So, uh, and, and, and this one is the one we're focusing on now, uh, where we uh, want to have run algorithms on it this year. Uh, in parallel with that, we're building up for the next one, which is 40 qubits. And our 
plan for the, the, the end of the century is 100 qubits. These are then, of course, uh, NISC computers, so there's no error correction here. Uh, so here you see a, a, a few pictures. So, so this is what it looks like, this chip looks like from the side. So this is actually done in collaboration with VTT, where we flip chip bond the qubit chip on top of the control chip. Uh, this allows us to keep the qubit chip uh, really clean and, and keep high coherence in the qubits. Uh, this is the cryostat. Uh, you see the sample holder here with the forest of, of, of cables. Uh, this is the, 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 the base for one of the spin-off companies, this, this sample holder for the, for the qubits. And uh, we're using uh, cube, cube blocks, um, uh, microwave generators to generate the microwave pulses that controls the, the, the computer. This is what the quantum computer actually looks like for, for those of you who are uh, uh, experts. So here are our transmon qubits. The crosses here are transmon qubits in a square lattice of five by five. Uh, the longer lines here are uh, flux-tuned uh, parametric couplers that then do the two qubit gates. Uh, so this is the, the qubit chip. You see it's very clean. Uh, uh, and that is also what's in red on this side here. And the green and the blue here is on the control chip. That's the readout and the control lines. So this is what, uh, what it looks like. Uh, we are also building a, a full stack. So we're uh, uh, having all these steps of, of we have the, the QPU, we have the microwave equipment, we have the firmware to control that. We have a cloud interface, and then we have the, the high-level uh, user uh, at, at here. And, and this we have done as a cloud service, of course, so that we can connect many quantum computers to, to, to the same uh, software, and we can also then give different access to different users. And uh, Joram will continue uh, on, on how this is actually used uh, in, in the next talk. Uh, so. Uh, we have also built up something which is called Qual 9000. Uh, this is a, a small quantum computer that uh, we, where we want to make, give access to, to, to outside users. And uh, uh, the, the, uh, this is also uh, now extended because we got additional funding from the Wallenberg Foundation to form a test bed. Uh, with uh, starting with 25 qubits and then going to, to 40 qubits. And uh, this is the one that will be uh, then uh, demonstrated at this uh, digital assembly in Stockholm in two days that uh, Tommaso was talking about. Uh, so the test bed, what is the, what is the idea of the test bed? Well, uh, you know, we're making a lot of research on this uh, 25 qubit chip. We're trying to improve it all the time. We're calibrating it. We're testing it. We have our hands full to, to just run that. But that means that no one can really run uh, uh, algorithms on this uh, in, at the same time. So for this reason, we simply copy it. So we put, the, put another, a copy of this in a, a separate cryostat uh, and, and open that so that uh, outside users and specifically Swedish industry can, can use this uh, and test quantum algorithms. And that is the basis for the, for the test bed. So the test bed has a, a, a budget of 172 million uh, Swedish kroners. It will have around 10, 10 people. It's a, a five-year effort. Uh, and there will be this 25 qubit processor up and running in, in 1st of January, 2025. Uh, and this will then uh, allow uh, researchers and big companies to, to uh, run test quantum algorithms and really do sort of research on the algorithm part uh, on an operational uh, quantum computer. Uh, so, and, and we promise that there will be no development work done on the test bed. That will be done on the other computer. And, uh, we have also promised that after two years, we will upgrade that to our next uh, quantum computer, which is going to be 40 
uh, qubits. We will have an algorithm uh, help desk, a quantum help desk, where, where uh, researchers and industry can come with a problem that they think can be solved on a quantum computer, and then the quantum help desk will help them to boil this down to a, a quantum algorithm that can then be optimized for our hardware. So we are open about what's under the hood in our, in our um, hardware. Uh, that means that you can optimize. We know exactly which two qubit gates you can run, and you can then optimize your algorithm for, for that. Uh, you, we know how fast is a two qubit gate versus a one qubit gate, and that can also be used to optimize uh, the algorithm. Uh, on the side, there will also be a hardware test bed. This is for the smaller companies that can come and test their devices that they want to sell so that they can write spec sheets that are, are, are tested uh, at a low temperature. It's expensive to do that. It costs about uh, seven million to, to, to buy equipment for that. Uh, we will have this test bed uh, and, and the small companies can come and for a small fee they can use this and test their equipment so they can write their, their spec sheet and they can sell their uh, devices. That's the general idea of, of, the, of the test bed. And so this is, this is another way to, uh, uh, to look at this. That there's, so, so there's these three different parts. There's the algorithm test bed, there's the hardware test bed, and this is the, the help desk. Uh, and, uh, this, and, and this is funded by an, extra, a, a, an additional grant from the Wallenberg Foundation. Okay, so th this was my talk, so I thank you for your attention, and I'll be happy to take questions. Okay, questions for a pair? I had a question regarding the test bed. Yep. Uh, for the, let's say, if it's supposed to be used directly by the researchers from the companies, but do all these companies that you listed before, do they have really dedicated uh, research teams that develop quantum algorithms they, they that are, could be run? Uh, yeah. They are starting to have teams now. Uh, and of course, uh, to first order, it will be uh, used for, for things that the, the industrial PhD students do. Uh, but there's typically in the company a team around those. But it will also be used by uh, researchers in VACT, but also other researchers in Sweden uh, that can come if they have an idea and they, so it, it will work a little bit like a, a, a big computer facility where you can sort of uh, apply for time to, to, use, to use the computer. Just something from the, let's say, algorithm side and from the Nordic perspective, something that would be, I think, very useful as a kind of industry uh, a collaboration with, with academia and this kind of research would be to also really test, like, okay, I'm just talking, for example, from our side, uh, you know, performing certain kind of different kind of measurements than is typically done on quantum hardware would be very useful for us if the, if the, if the quantum hardware was optimized this way. And, mm. and, and to do this kind of, like, let's say, changes maybe even in the hardware and testing let's say, different kind of hardware designs that would be optimized even for the mm -hmm. algorithms yeah. could, be, could so be very useful the, as a collaboration. I would say in the short run, uh, we will put the 25 qubit chip and make, it, make sure it, it works, and then we will open it. So we will not change that. Uh, I if there are good ideas, we could possibly implement that in the 40 qubit chip. Uh, so in that sense, I'm sure we could uh, uh, collaborate, but... but uh, I, I think we cannot stop and change things. That, that wouldn't work uh, because it's a user facility. Yeah. More questions? Thank you. Um, questions. Can you said you are working on, on, on more quantum computers in parallel. So does it mean you have uh, one team which is working on quantum computers based on ion traps and the other one on mm. NV? No. Or, or no. Uh, what did you so, so all of them are, are uh, uh, superconducting based, uh, but they are a different size. So, so, 
So we have, at, so at the moment we have people working on the five qubit platform and doing experiments on that. At the same time, we're, we're trimming in the, the 25 qubit platform, which is cold and operational now, uh, even though not fully operational. And then at the same time, we're buying equipment and planning for the 40 qubit platform. So there are all these different stages, but it's, it's the, the same technology, but it's different size. So yesterday after the Minister of Education spoke, there was a side discussion among a number of people that uh, he was actually cutting the amount of money that was available for research, or the new government was cutting the amount of money that was available for research in Sweden. Have you found him receptive to um, funding quantum technology or is it uh, a hope? So, so, uh, so I was unfortunately not there yesterday. But, uh, uh, but uh, it was the Minister of Education, uh, Mats Persson, who, who, uh, who we presented this to, and I felt that he was uh, receptive and that he, he asked good questions. And, and, uh, yeah. and, but what that means uh, for the future, I have no idea. Um, when you see, when under the programs, you have 100 qubit, supercomputer qubit uh, computer. What's the use of perspective? Is 100 certainly not enough? Now, already IBM has made 400. Sure, yes. And uh, why you are uh, end of the, this decade, you said only 100. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So, so I, I, I think that we, uh, we set out a, cert, a certain uh, number of goals in, when we started in 2018. I think they, those were realistic goals, and I think, that, I think they still are five years later. <laughs> Uh, so we didn't want to be in the category where we promise too much and, and then it doesn't happen. So, but, 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 but you can ask, of course, well, why don't you give up when IBM already has 400 uh, qubits? Uh, I, I, we, simply, we want to learn. We want to build competence. We want to know not only what is quantum technology. We want to know how do you build a quantum computer. We want to have that knowledge. On, on that thing, I can comment that of those 433 qubits, um, only 10 are useful at every time <laughs> because that's the quantum volume. I mean, it, they cannot yeah. coherently couple more than that, right? So, so um, yeah, you know. Yeah, but also given the coherence, the quantum volume is, is correspondingly 